Hello and welcome once again to the reading of the Holy Bible with me. Um, typically I've been doing two chapters. I'd actually like to up that to three chapters as outside of this. I have been reading the Bible a lot more and it's... Basically I just want to read more of it that way we can... I kind of have an idea where I'd like to do multiple versions of the uh, at Catholic Bible, different translations, because it's interesting to see the different translation because um, Last week I picked up the Ignatius, the Revised Standard Version, thank you, um, of the Bible. And it's a fair amount different than this translation. So after we get through this translation, I think I'd like to, to read the Bible again for that translation, because it's interesting just how similar but different they are at the same time. So. I suppose that's what I'm trying to say. So today, since last time we did chapters 8 and 9, today we will be doing chapters 10, 11, and 12. So, chapter 10, Sons of Noah. These are the generation of the sons of Noah, Sem, Sham, and Jepheth. And unto them sons were born after the flood. Sons of Jepheth. The sons of Jepheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Thubal, and Mozok, and Tyrus, and the sons of Gomor, Asens, and Rephath, and Thogama, and the sons of Javan, Eliza, Elisa, and Tarsus, Ketham, and Dodanum. By these were divided the islands of the Gentiles and their lands, everyone according to his tongue, and their families and their nations. And the sons Also, there is a note for that for some reason I didn't. Anyways, chapter 10, verse 5, the island. So the Hebrews called all the remote countries to which they went by ships from Judea to Greece, Italy, Spain, etc. Sons of Cham. The sons of Cham, Chus and Mezram, and Futh and Chanan, and the sons of Chus, Saba and Hevela, and Sabatha, and Regma, and Sabacha, the sons of Regma, Seba and Dadan. Now trust begot Nimrod, who began to be mighty on the earth, and he was a stout hunter before the Lord. Hence came a proverb, even as Nimrod was a stout hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of the kingdom was Babylon, and Arak, and Achid, and Kaleen, and the land of Sinar. Out of that land came forth a Sir, and built Nineveh, in the streets of the city, and Chael. Resident also between Nineveh and Chael, this is the great city. And Mizraim begot Ludum, and Anamim, and Labim, Nephthuim, and Phetruzim, and Chalzim, of whom came forth the Philistines, and the Capthorim. And Chanan begot Sidon, his firstborn, the Hethite, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Jeruz, Jer, Jergazite, the Hebite, and the Arasite, the Sinite, and the Aradan, the Samarite, and the Ham, Hamathite, Hamath, Hamathite, and afterwards the families of the Chananites were spread abroad, and the limits of Chanan were from Sidon, as one comes to Gerara, even to Gaza, until thou enter Sodom and Gomorrah, and Adama and Seboim, even to Lessa. These are the children of Cham and their kindreds, in tongues and generations, and lands and nations. Now going back real quickly to verse 9. A stout hunter, not of beasts, but of men, whom by violence and tyranny he brought under his dominion. And such he was not only his opinion of men, but before the Lord, an example of his sight who cannot be deceived. Okay. Sons of Sem. Of Sem also the father of all the children of Heber, the elder brother of Japheth, sons were born. The sons of Sem, Elam, and Esser, and Ephrax, and Arphaxed, and Lib, and Aram. The sons of Aram, Us, and Hul, and Gather, and Mes. But Arphaxed begot Sail, of whom was born Heber. And to Heber were born two sons. The name of the one was Phale, because in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name Jechtan. Which Jechtan begot Elmodad, 
and Seleph, and Er and Azar, Moth, and Jair, and Adoram, and Uzal, and Decla, and Ebal, and Abimel, Saba, and Ophir, and Havila, and Jobab, Jobab, pardon me. All these were the sons of Jephthah, and their dwelling was for Mesa, as we go on as far as Sephir, a mountain in the east. These are the children of Sem, according to their kindreds and tongues and countries and their nations. These are the families of Noah. According to their peoples and nations, by these were the nations divided on the earth after the flood. Chapter 11 The Tower of Babel. And the earth was of one tongue and of the same speech. And when they were removed from the east, and they found a plain in the land of Senar, and dwelt in it. And each one said to his neighbor, Come, let us make brick and bake them with fire. And they had brick instead of stones, and slime instead of mortar. And they said, Come, let us make a city and a tower, the top whereof may reach to heaven. And let us make our name famous before we be scattered abroad into all lands. The, the confusion of tongues. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of Adam were building. And he said, Behold, it is one people, and all have one tongue. And they have begun to do this. Neither will they leave off from their designs till they accomplish them indeed. Come ye, therefore, let us go down and there confound their tongue, that they may not understand one another's speech. And so the Lord scattered them from that place into all lands, and they ceased to build the city. And therefore the name thereof was called Babel, because there the language of the whole earth was confounded, and from thence the Lord scattered them abroad upon the face of all countries. Chapter 11, verse 9, Babel, an example of confusion. So, sons of Sin. These are the generations of Sin. Sem was a hundred years old when he begot Arphaxad, two years after the flood. And Sem lived after he begot Arphaxad five hundred years and begot sons and daughters. And Arphaxad lived thirty-five years and begot Sam. And Arphaxad lived after he begot Sam three hundred and three years and begot sons and daughters. Sam also lived thirty years and begot Heber. And Sam lived after he begot Heber four hundred and three years and begot sons and daughters. And Heber lived thirty-four years and begot Phalid, and Heber lived after he begot Phalid, 430 years and begot sons and daughters. Phalid also lived 30 years and begot Reu, and Phalid lived after he begot Reu, 209 years and begot sons and daughters, and Reu lived 32 years and begot Sari, and Reu lived after he begot Sari, 207 years and begot sons and daughters, and Sari lived 30 years and begot Nakor, and Sari lived after he begot Nakor, Two hundred years and begot sons and daughters, and Nicor lived nine and twenty years and begot there, and Nicor lived after begot there one hundred and nineteen years and begot sons and daughters, and there lived seventy years and begot Abram and Nicor and Aram. So now we're getting on to Abraham, who is at this moment Abraham. Sons of Ther, and these are the generations of Ther. Ther begot Abram, Nicor, and Aram, and Aram begot Lot. And Aaron died before Ther his father in the land of his nativity, and Ur the Chalice. And Abram and Nachor married wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nachor's wife, Melchah, the daughter of Aaron. Father of Mecca. Father of Malka and father of Jessica. And Sarai was barren and had no children. And there took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Aaron his son's son. And Sarai his daughter in law, the wife of Abram his son, and brought them out of the earth of the Chaldees to go into the land of Chan. And they came as far as Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Ther were two hundred and five years, and he died in Haran. Two seconds, please. <sighs> Pardon me. Chapter 12, The Call of Abram. And the Lord said to Abram, Go forth out of thy country and from thy kindred, and out of thy father's house, and come into the land which I shall grow thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and magnify thy name, and thou shalt be blessed. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all the kindred of the earth be blessed. Abram journeys to Chan. So Abram went out as the Lord had commanded him, and Lot, and Lot went with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he went forth from Haran, and he took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, 
and all the substance which they had gathered, and the soul which they had gotten in Haran. And they went out to go into the land of Chan. And when they were come into it, Abram passed through the country into the place of Sechem, as far as the noble Baal. Now the Chanite was at that time in the land. And the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, To thy seed will I give this land. And he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him, and passing on from thence to a mountain that was on the east side of Bethel. He, would, he there pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and high on the east. He built there also an altar to the Lord and called upon his name. And Abram went forward, going and proceeding on to the south. A famine, a famine drives Abram to Egypt. And there came a famine in the country, and Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was very grievous in the land. He was near to enter into Egypt. He said to Sarai, his wife, I know that thou art a beautiful woman, and that when the Egyptians shall see thee, they will say, She is his wife, and they will kill me and keep thee. Say therefore, I pray thee, that thou art my sister, that I may be well used for thee, and that my soul may live for thy sake. We do have some clarification on that as well, because that is kind of a... That is, anyways. So, what it says is, chapter 12, verse 13, My sister, this was no lie, because she was truly his half-sister, being daughter of his father, but not of his mother. Therefore, in the style of the Hebrew, she might truly be called his... Sister, see Genesis 20, oh, that's hard to read. Oh, actually, 2012, so you know, we would get to that eventually, but we're not there quite yet. Just curious. But anyway, that does lead to some things that happen, which at the time, I mean, at the time, that would have, anyways, I should actually read this. Pharaoh takes Sarai, and when Abram was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians saw the woman that she was very beautiful. And the princess told Pharaoh, and raised her before him, and the woman was taken into the house of Pharaoh, and they used Abram well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen, and he asses and manservants and maidservants, and she asses and camels. God punishes Pharaoh. But the Lord scares Pharaoh and his house, with most grievous stripes for Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said to him, What is this that thou hast done to me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? For what cause didst thou say she was thy sister, that I may, may take her, might take her to be my, to my wife? Now for, therefore there is thy wife, take her, and go thy way. And Pharaoh gave his men orders concerning Abram, and they led him away and his wife and all that he had. So basically, that was the first time, one of the first times, because we don't have the commandments yet. This is um, before the commandments, that's kind of teaching into it that, um, you know, you should not lie with other people's wives. So, yeah. Um, anyways, that's what we'll read this time. Next week will be chapters 13, 14, and 15. Thank you very much for watching. You make sure you have a great day, and God bless. Thank you very much.